The Super Nintendo is home to a wide range of classics, but of them all, Super Mario Kart is the first game in what can only be described as Nintendo's golden goose of video games. Of all the Nintendo games, the Mario Kart franchise stands out as being pretty much one of the top 5 best-selling games for every single Nintendo console. This is quite the achievement for a game that really boils down to driving around in a go-kart or a bike throwing stuff at each other as you race. But hey, pretty much everyone has played one of these at some point, either alone in their rooms or at a friend's house. And given the relatability we all feel over these games, I thought it would be fun to go back and replay… well, all of them I guess. So if you're looking forward to a specific one of these games being covered, then make sure to get subscribed so you're around for when that video is released. But really, the memories for me are all over the place with this franchise. There's nothing quite like playing Mario Kart. The excessive anger I felt when getting hit with a blue shell and the joy of getting a first place finish just in the nick of time, just to name a few, are some of the best memories and experiences I've ever felt in gaming. I mean, I've played them all and had similar experiences with each one. Aside from the first one. Released way back in 1992 or 93 for people like me, Super Mario Kart came out flying with tremendous success. And that success only kept coming and spawned the rest of the franchise that we have today. So it's a bit strange to me how this first game in the series actually nowadays has more of a reputation for being one of, if not the worst one, of them all. At the time of writing this very sentence, I have yet to touch the darn game, but my predictions go like this. I think at least what ended up happening is that when the series moved from this 2.5D style to fully 3D, it represented an improvement so large that not only were the newer games just better and more fun to play than this old one, but they outright replaced the old style entirely. And with that, let's get into this. Starting off, Super Mario Kart has three cups to choose from in the beginning, with the special cup needing to be unlocked. We got eight characters to choose from, separated into weight classes. Not that the game tells you this outright, but that's where the magical long forgotten game manual comes in place. This thing is really nice looking and pretty much tells you all you need to know if you want to get into playing this or are just into old gaming stuff in general. I'll leave a link to the official PDF of the manual in the description. Now before going into anything else, we have to talk about this game's graphical presentation. This is by far the biggest drawback this game has. This 2.5-ish look, if you even want to call it that, just doesn't look that nice at all. The characters look fine in game, but the maps being flat like this makes the game not only look bad, it strains your eyes more given it's really difficult to see what's going on like this. And even after getting used to the look, it really holds this game back in my opinion. I would prefer a fully top-down view in my opinion, simply for the eye relief, but I get in the context of things, having anything that looked even remotely 3D was a huge selling point. But if you get past the graphics, what's the game like? My first session went a little like this. Oh god. Oh, oh. Oh, 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 the, oh, this, this controls very weird. Oh, gee, oh, 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 gee, oh, oh, no. Oh, no, jeez, what is this slide? Oh, there we go, there we go, get the speed. Oh, my actual god, this is hard AF. Shit, no! I started off pretty wondrous and excited, but I quickly learned that I was not that good at this at first. I tried my best going around the track and all, but as many probably did, I crashed and hit pretty much every wall. The TLDR is that Super Mario Kart works a little differently from the rest of the series. The control for one felt like they only really did what I wanted them to do some of the time. After playing a few races, I started getting better, crashing less and feeling a bit more in control. But even as I got better, I could never shake the unwieldy feel fully. It's like I'm 90% in control, with the eventual chance that the character decides to hit a wall against my will. But I can live with that. Super Mario Kart works a lot like Mario Kart 64 in a sense. You have to finish at least 4 in a race to move on to the next track. Fail and you have to do the race over again. You also have these coins on the ground that, just like in Mario Kart 8, boosts your top speed but also apparently shields you from spinning out in some cases. Every character also has a special item that only they can use when they're CPUs. 
you heard that right, exclusive items for CPU use only. Ain't that crazy? That would never fly in Mario Kart today. And an even stranger thing is that the cups have five races instead of the usual four in every other game. Truthfully, the tracks themselves leave a lot to be desired. I get it had a lot to do with this being the first game and all, but did we really need a Mario Circuit 1, 2, 3, and even 4? I feel like I'm doing nothing but ranting here. So what are the positives here? I mean, given everything I've said so far, is the game complete trash or is it actually somewhat good? The answer is yes, it's still a fun solid game for the SNES, despite shortcomings here and there. While there are issues with the game, the core still feels like any other Mario Kart. I mean, there's not much to say other than you race and you throw shit at each other. As a first generation game in the franchise, it's not surprising that this has issues, but they're pretty much all fixed in the next game. However, that's something we will take a look at next time, because we aren't done here yet. Just like in all other Mario Kart games, you pick difficulty based on the CC level. In this game, 50 and 100 is all you have to start off with. 150 CC is also unlocked later, but even at 100 CC, this game is actually rather difficult. Now I understand that a lot of what I'm about to say comes down to me being bad and not being used to this game as well as many others are, but really, the game is actually more difficult in more ways than one. Your own skill as the player certainly is a factor, but as in any Mario Kart, you need a bit of luck with the items for one. But this is the first Mario Kart that I know of that outright cheats sometimes. For example, playing this Bowser Castle map, I had to redo the race several times in order to actually beat Bowser. Why? For one, the level is outright challenging, with sharp corners and so on. But there's more than one time where these thwomps slam down. Now, for normal players, if you hit them, you stop right in your tracks. But upon redoing this race so many times, I saw this kind of bullshit happen over and over. Bowser outright went through the thwomps without slowing down an inch. And besides that, Bowser's CPU item, the Lava Ball, is an outright pain to deal with on this map given they stay wherever he puts them until someone collides with them. Now I can live with a challenging map, but I really dislike stuff like the passing through walls and the exclusive items for CPUs. But even excluding the experience I had with that map, 100cc is challenging given one mess up often means it's near impossible to catch up back into first place. Some might say this should be accepted as a SNES era difficulty thing, but I disagree. Just because a game is old doesn't mean it's immune to bad game design. I should know given I've created games myself back in college. And before somebody asks, I really wanted to play a lot of battle mode here, but unfortunately I couldn't because in this game it's only two player. So that will have to be a topic that we'll revisit in a later episode. Thankfully though, time trial is here and works pretty much the same way as it does in all other games. I know for one, I spent a lot of time here at least when attempting to master the controls of this game. And on a different note, I just want to mention how good the music is in this game. Pretty much all of the songs in this game are just feel-good AF. Aside from Bowser's Castle. I don't really like that one. I have trauma. I want to be as honest as possible here. Super Mario Kart is a good game. It certainly was one of the best ways to start what would become one of the most successful video game franchises in history. However, as with anything, it has issues. Some minor and some major. So would I actually recommend someone from today's day and age go back and play this? No. While it's a good game, every single game afterwards surpassed this one fully. The only real reason to ever go back and play this today is if you have a genuine interest in gaming history and want to experience the beginning of it all. Otherwise, stick to the newer interests. So get subscribed and join me here next time as we take a look at Mario Kart 64. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you there. Stay safe!